Afternoon guys, Dave Canberra at the Pathfinder School back with another segment in our medicinal trees of the eastern woodlands. Um, you know, funny thing happened here, it's a, just a lucky circumstance I guess, all the way around, not really for me, but um, the next tree that I was going to discuss with you guys in this series is going to be willow for its pain relieving properties. And, you know, willow was used, especially white willow, throughout the last few centuries as a pain reliever, just like aspirin. Black willow, on the other hand, which grows a lot prevalent in eastern woodlands around water, like the bark that I'm getting ready to harvest now, um, was not so much used for pain relieving properties as it was for male libido and things like what Viagra was used for in the 19th century. But it has the same pain relieving properties as white willow bark, but it has none of the side effects of aspirin. So it's a very good handy plant and you can process it several different ways. You can make a decoction from the bark, which is what we're going to do today, um, or you can make a herbal tea from the bark, depending on how strong you want it to be, or you could make a tincture, which means that you soak the bark, the inner bark in alcohol for a given period of time and let those oils absorb into the alcohol, strain it off, and then you take it drop by drop, and that's called a tincture. We're going to make a slight decoction out of it today and mix it with another plant that we'll talk about. And the reason I say this is kind of fortuitous is, you know, I just got back from an Everglades advanced class, and obviously after four days of sleep deprivation, food deprivation, water deprivation, your body seems to lose its immune system or its ability to fight off common germs. And I got home and both of my grandchildren had the flu. And now, you know, I woke up this morning and I'm aching all over, aching all the way to the bone. It hurts to walk, it hurts to talk, it hurts to move. I'm getting a lot of chills. So we're going to mix another plant that I'm going to talk to you about in a few minutes with the willow to make ourselves a concoction for influenza. But let's get some of this willow bark harvested first and then we'll move on to the next plant. Stay with me, boys. Okay, so this is our willow tree. And, you know, as you can see in the beginning of this film, there's not a whole lot of bloom left on this tree because it's toward winter months. So it pays you to understand the properties of it, what the inner bark looks like, what the bark looks like what the branches look like in the winter time, where it grows, understand where that resource might be. This resource is on the Pathfinder property. I know exactly where it's at. It's about seven or eight acres into the property around a pond, but I know where it's at in time of need. So now what I'm going to do is, and I don't want to kill this tree, so I don't want to wring the bark off of it, but I do want some inner bark. So I'm going to hack down into this thing a little bit and just take a strip off of here if I can, just like that. And you can see now I've captured that cambium layer of bark inside I've got that inner bark right underneath the outer bark and that's what I really want now I'll take this back to my camp and I can dry this out and obviously I can use that inner bark for fire tinder as well but this inner bark is what I'm really looking for at this point this also makes very very good cordage but for now it's going to make a pain relieving medicine for us Okay hey guys, so let's talk about the other plant. I gave you a, a pretty up close and personal video of this thing a minute ago, and this is called Bone Set, okay? And Bone Set is a plant that I would suggest you have in your top eight. If you follow the Pathfinder system and you have eight medicinal plants and eight wild edibles that you keep in your toolbox for use all the time, Bone Set should be very high on your list of medicinal plants. The reason for that is, you know, Bone Set is a plant that is used for influenza and malaria. It's used for things that cause you to run a high fever. Um, this plant was found all over the eastern frontier in the 18th and 19th century in every farmhouse and every kitchen hanging from the rafters drying out just waiting for somebody to get sick and get the chills and get a flu coming on and this is what they gave them because the Native Americans introduced the Europeans to this very early on when they started suffering from influenza because they didn't have tolerances built up to it when they first came to the Americas. So the Indians taught this plant to the whites and it was used prolifically throughout the frontier in the 18th to 19th century. The thing with this plant is it does a lot of things. Okay, this is a very powerful plant and you have to understand that. Too much of this plant will make you vomit. It's not necessarily poisonous, but it will make you vomit. In some cases, that's a good thing, but it will make you run a high fever which will help you to break a fever. It'll make your body sweat, it'll open up your pores, it'll thin out your blood, and it will cause you to break a fever, okay? And, you know, another name for this plant, or another acronym that they gave this plant, or another nickname was that it was used for bone break fever. You know, and you get that aching in your body that feels like your bones are just about to break every time you walk, and this is what they used, 
bone set. Okay, so remember this. Now, we're going to take this back to camp with our willow, and we're going to make ourselves some medicine with it. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to prepare that, so stay with me. Okay, so we're back at camp now, and uh, i got to tell you, just that walk, you know, to get those couple plants, heated my body's core temperature up, made me feel a little bit better. So sometimes just getting a little exercise, you know, when you really feel down, can help you out a lot too, just to heat that core temperature up and kind of fight that fever and infection. But anyway, so back here we got our black willow, pain reliever, male libido, bone set, fever, influenza. Now, if you look at some of the field guides out there, they pretty much agree with this. A book that was recommended to me, to me by Micah McLaughlin, who's a practicing herbalist um, from Michigan, but I compared it with the pamphlets from Waterford Press and from the Eastern Field Guide uh, by Peterson, and they all pretty much agree. And the good thing about that is, is that you can take those big healthy books like, you know, medicinal plants and things like that that are this thick and this big, and you can put them on the shelf. And in your haversack, you can carry that small flip-out pamphlet that doesn't weigh anything. And as long as it gives you the basics, and it does, um, in fact, I'll open this one up right now just to kind of confirm what we talked about it says in here um, on the black walnut or on the I'm sorry on the black willow that a uh, 15 minute boiling of the bark works as a pain reliever it says with bone set it says that steep leaves will help with flu symptoms and fever pretty pretty simple pretty self-explanatory plus you got a picture of the plant now I don't want to waste resources. I want to be able to do things simultaneously. So I don't want to make a decoction of this bark and then turn around and steep the tea for the bone set. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my cup on the boil, let it boil down just a little bit with the willow bark in it, take it off the fire, go ahead and put my leaves and my bone set in there, cover it with a lid and just let it sit for 15 minutes. So it's going to take me a half an hour before I can ingest this medicine. And that's the important thing to remember. You know. The pharmacy is not right down the street. Hopefully it's around you close. You should identify those resources as you're walking in your area of operation. But part of the understanding of all of these medicinal trees, medicinal plants, all these local resources that you have is, that's what enables you to thin down your kit. It's easy for me to say, oh, just take a 10-piece kit. It's easy for me to say, oh, you don't need a first aid kit. You got duct tape, a bandana, and cords. What else do you need? Well, I'm telling you that because I understand how to use the local resources so I don't have to carry things like ibuprofen, amphetamines, you know, bacitracin ointments, all of those kind of things that you add to a first aid kit. And you say, well, that doesn't weigh very much. Well, neither does a tent when it's by itself. But when you add it to your kit, it becomes more weight. And that's what we're trying to reduce is the bulk of items that we really need because they're not going to be that multifunctional other than iodine. These plants are multifunctional and that's what we want. So stay with me. We're going to go over here to the fire. We're going to make us up some tea, chug it down. I'll try to stay with you to see what happens. It might make me vomit if I take too much, but at the least it should make me break a sweat really good. So we'll find out. Okay, so I've got my water on the boil here. You can see, and uh, I don't have my willow bark in there yet. <laughs> I wanted to wait till that water got nice and hot <clears throat> so I don't waste any of the volatile oils while it's heating up from evaporation steam. Now, I could cover that if I wanted to, but at this point, you know, I could just put my cup over the top of it. That's what I wanted to do. Not that worried about it. I'm trying to make a fairly weak uh, treatment right here to begin with because I'm not sure how my body's going to react to the bone set in just an offhand dosage like this where I just drink some of it down. So I'm not trying to make you know, a quart of this stuff. And it's recommended you take most of this stuff two to three times a day. Um, most herbal medicinal people um, that practice this stuff for a living use tinctures where they've concentrated this stuff down in alcohol. You know, in the woods, we don't have that luxury all the time. So we have to make teas, and that's what I'm doing right now. And we'll see how it works out. Okay, you know, in uh, the Waterford Press Guide, it doesn't really specify inner bark or outer bark of the willow. So I've just taken some of the inner and the outer I'm just going to throw it all in there. I don't figure it can hurt too much. It's not poison, so it's not going to hurt me too bad. I'm going to put that in there first. My water is now boiling. I'm not going to put my bone set in there until I let that boil down a little bit for about 10 or 15 minutes. You know, an interesting side note on this uh, willow bark is there was an 18th century or 19th century uh, herbalist out of Appalachia, uh, an Appalachian medicinal doctor, who thought that the willow bark decoction worked much better or the willow bark tincture worked much better if the willow bark was burnt in the fire until it was ashes and then the tincture was created from those ashes. It's an interesting side note. 
obviously you don't have that kind of time to mess around when you're in the woods but it's just another little bit of knowledge that you learn when you do research on stuff like that so I thought I'd pass it on to you okay so I've waited you know 10 or 15 minutes and I'm gonna get this pot off the fire now or this you know diet bottle I don't have a piece of cordage real handy I could dig one out of my pack or something but I thought I'd show you an interesting little trick um, I've just taken a stick off the ground here and it's about I'm going to snap it off to a little bit less width, or right at the same width as the shoulders on this on this bottle right here. So about like that, I'm hoping it will work. Then I'm just going to take a piece of this willow bark that I had saved, and I'm just going to tie a couple half hitches in here, just like I would do if I were putting a toggle on a trap. Exactly the same principle. Half hitch on one side, half hitch on the other side to create like a clove hitch knot on a piece of willow bark cordage and I'm just going to drop that down inside my bottle just like this pick my bottle up out of the fire and set it down and now if I set that up right it won't be too tough to get that right back out of there just a quick nifty little trick if you don't have a multi-tool on you you know you can use a piece of cordage for this I just used a piece of bark it doesn't really matter but it works just the same so now I'm going to let this sit here for a few minutes and I'm going to take my bone set and I only need the leaves of the bone set so I'm just going to take a few leaves off here like I said I'm not sure about the dosage on this so I'm kind of being careful I'm going to macerate these leaves a little bit in other words I'm going to tear them up to release some of the volatile oils inside them and I'm going to put them down inside my bottle and then I'm just going to put my canteen cup or my cup for my bottle over the top of that and let it sit there and steep for 15 minutes and we'll be back. Okay, I took our mixture here and took it over the creek and dumped the bottle in the creek so that I could cool the water down a little bit before I poured it off. And now I'm going to take my cup and strain this mix through a piece of cotton. This thing's not too hot to hold on to. You have to wait till the cotton cloth gets saturated so it seeps through. You can help it with your finger a little bit by rubbing it in. I've got two layers of cotton here to double this material over. I could have used one, but it's not hurting anything to use two. And I don't need a whole lot of this. You know, I made enough of this for at least a couple of doses. I really only want to drink a couple ounces of this at a time. And that's the really important thing to remember when you start messing around and experimenting with medicinal plants. Anything that you read for a dosage, you know, half it to begin with until you see how your body's going to react to it because everybody's different. You know, if it tells you to make a decoction, make an infusion. If it tells you to make a tincture, make a decoction. If it tells you to boil it for 20 minutes, you know, and, and boil it again, just boil it once. Just, you know, what I'm trying to say is don't make it as potent. You know, if it tells you to take six or eight ounces of it, then just take two or three. See how your body reacts to it first, and you can experiment from there. Okay, I've got probably an ounce and a half in here right now. And I think that that's probably going to be what I'm going to go with. So let's see what this tastes like. Because I'm sure if what I've read, it probably tastes like crap. Oh, it's horrible. It's horrible. almost an undrinkable horrible but it's got a really bitter taste to it and things that are bitter like that usually are the things that warm your body up so that's good if it doesn't make me puke it makes me sweat I'll be on the right road now you can see it started raining out here just to add insult to injury but we'll be back in a little while I'm Dave Canberra at the Pathfinder School, and I appreciate you joining me for another video. I appreciate your support, and I appreciate your views. Thank you. Okay, guys. Well, <coughs> I wanted to uh, go ahead and get an update posted on this uh, last video, Useful and Medicinal Trees of the Eastern Woodlands. We talked about willow, and I combined that with uh, bone set for flu. It's been two hours now. I'm going to tell but I want you to understand, you know, what's going on with this bone set and willow um, tea that I made basically part decoction part infusion 
Um, it's been two hours. I didn't take very much. Um, I can feel my core heated up. The pain in my joints and things like that is pretty much gone. The chills have not subsided too much, um, but the pain is gone. I don't have a headache and I'm burning up. It feels like my skin's just on fire, um, but I don't have a headache at all. Um, I have had to urinate twice in the last hour, and that's very uncommon for me. Um, I usually walk around dehydrated most of the time by you know, true standards. Um, my urine is typically straw yellow all the time. And I've had to urinate twice, you know, recently here. And it actually almost burned both times. So I don't know if uh, that's the medicine trying to kick something out of my body, you know, or what it is exactly. But uh, I think that my body's reacting okay to this. So I'm going to, instead of waiting the four hours that I would normally wait to take it again, I'm going to go ahead and go with two hours. And I'm going to shoot another ounce and a half of this in me real quick. And see what that does. Like I said, this is the nastiest thing I've ever tasted in my entire life. But uh, if it works, it'll be well worth it. And the important thing with this stuff is, is to remember that you're trying to do it when you don't have to do it. You know, I don't have to take this decoction now. I'm not in a survival situation. I could, you know, go to the house and take some NyQuil and hit the rack. But I want to see how this stuff works now so that if I ever have to use it, I'll know. And that's my point. I've never used bone set before. I've always said that I would keep that in my toolbox. I've always said that I'll use that if I have to. But I've never really had an opportunity to use it until now. So now I want to try it. And I'm interested to see what happens once I put some more in my system. Well, I've got another probably ounce and a half here. Down the hatch she goes. And uh, I'll get back to you with the sassafras video and let you know how this turned out.